I just got back from the Tops Industry Conference and boy, do I have a lot to say about it. Some big observations about the future of the trading card industry starts right now. Hello, and here we go. Welcome to the third episode of The Jeff Wilson Show. The smartest person in the room isn't the person who knows the most. The smartest person in the room is the person who gets those who know the most into the room. The secret to building a great team or a great business is to surround yourself with people who are better than you. People who bring outside perspective and enhance the vision of what you want to accomplish. And this is exactly what Fanatics is doing in the trading card space. I just returned from the Topps Industry Conference in Phoenix and had the opportunity to talk in depth with many of Fanatics' leaders. And their resumes are not what you would traditionally expect. There are no former card shop owners or 30-year industry veterans leading Fanatics collectibles. Rather, much of Fanatics' team has never worked in the hobby before. They come instead from Google, Facebook, Red Bull, Snapchat, Amazon Music, StockX, as well as big entertainment companies and big business consultancies. The outside perspective and new thinking they're bringing into trading cards is making some hardened collectors nervous. But I believe it's the best thing that could possibly happen for the development of the industry as a whole. Fanatic's goal is to 10X the number of collectors and accomplishing that is going to require a lot of fresh thinking. So we've got a lot to talk about <laughs> yes, today, we Kelly. Do. We really do. This oh conference was Lord. something. It was really something. That is ins I mean, yeah, because I we talked as you were, you know, in Phoenix and there was a lot of back and forth and, and a lot of information that you shared with the team. And we also shared that on Instagram. So, I mean, if anybody wants an immediate sort of uh, bullet point uh, update on all of the news that was dropped. We did a lot of that on coverage for for SCI. We did. They did a lot of big announcements. Yeah. They announced, you know, what was going on with new products right. and everything like that. So there was a lot of kind of tactical announcements. But also, it was really interesting observing the big picture of yeah. everything that was happening there. And that's what I want to talk more about today. Yeah, but the, okay, so you've got one line in in your monologue that's got me interested and i do want to i do want to talk about you know what it was like meeting the fanatics team mm -hmm. and you know what you're seeing from leadership there but well actually two two points two points um let's go let's go with the one that caught my 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 ear first the hardened collector nervous yeah why, yeah. why, where does that come from? I think Fanatics has people nervous i i think Fanatics has a lot of people excited mm -hmm. and i think the people who they have excited tend to be people who are newer in the industry, tend to, people, tend to be people who are newer in the hobby who have a outlook that the future could maybe be a little bit different. The people who I think Fanatics makes nervous are the people that have been in part of the industry for a long time. At the conference, the card shop owners mm -hmm. that had their card shops, you know, whose card shops were open, you know, 20 years, 30 years, they tended to be the ones that were scared of all of this stuff that was happening and maybe scared's too harsh of a word they they want to see it play out yes. they're hesitant yeah hesitant is the right word and look i get it they've been very profitable you know the last mm -hmm. few years right they've they've built up a successful business they've worked hard over the last 30 years to build a successful business they've established all of these relationships with all these distributors and panini and the whole world is changing around them. And now you get all these cool kids from Fanatics coming into town, <laughs> all these you know, tech backgrounds and business consulting backgrounds, and they don't look the part. They're, they're different, they're new. You know, they're not, they're not the traditional card collectors. These are the new cool kids that are coming in to run the trading card space. I think it's gonna be a great thing. There are some industry veterans that are concerned. Well, that's the thing that is sort of, mind-boggling to me and why they're concerned because the fanatics just said we want to multiply this by 10x fanatics so said, that means yeah. to anybody listening to that that there's money coming down the line 
Yes, Fanatics said they wanted to grow the collector base by 10 times. That is their stated goal. They said it multiple times during the conference. Their corporate goal, Fanatics Collectibles corporate goal, is to grow the number of collectors in the trading card space, in the sports card space, by 10, 10x, 10x, which is a massive goal. If you think about that, like right now, it's estimated that like two to three million people, somewhere in that range, bought or sold a trading card over the last year. Mm -hmm. They want to take that to 20 to 30 million. From 2 to 3 million to 20 to 30. 20 to 30 million would be a sizable portion yeah. of the U.S. population. Oh, yes. I mean, that's a big part of the U.S. population when you get out. I mean, that's bigger than most states, 20 to 30 million. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a big number. And that's their goal, and they're laser-focused on it. And to get there, it is going to require fresh thinking. You mm -hmm. have to approach the market differently. Things have to change. What worked for the last 70 years is not going to be what works to get us to the goal of 10xing the market. No, I mean, because if it would have, we would have already been there. Yes. So that's that's very, very Im an important part there that like the two of those factors are sort of contradicting each other but the the point that you're making is the outside the fresh thinking which is what fanatics is bringing so you you got to meet a lot of fanatics execs and you you know you labeled them the cool kids that are coming in what what did you think of meeting them was there anybody that stood out like what what is what can we all expect from fanatic leadership Fanatics very leadership. very impressive like from a resume perspective, from a work history perspective, I mean, Fanatics has assembled the Avengers, you know, to lead wow. Fanatics trading cards. That's a big, that's a big play there. These people have unbelievably impressive backgrounds. I mean, we're talking the chief marketing officer of Red Bull. We're talking one of the leaders at Snapchat. We're talking executives at, you know, McKenzie and Boston Consulting Group, all the, you know, the, those types mm -hmm. of things. I mean, we're talking, you know, people high up in big organizations, Google, Facebook, um, you know, StockX, Amazon. I mean, there, there's, it's really, they've really assembled a lot of talent. Now, what's interesting is most of these people have never worked in cards before. And some of them have never even collected before. Some of them have, but mm -hmm. some of them haven't. This is new. And it's going to be a real interesting push-pull. Now, the one thing that Fanatics did do, which I think was smart, is they promoted uh, somebody out of Tops, David Liner, mm -hmm. out of Tops, who is a leader at Tops. He's been with Tops for 14 years. They made him president of Fanatics trading cards. So the CEO, Mike Mahan, yep. came from the entertainment world, not a trading card background, but big entertainment. And he, he does collect. He's a personal collector, but he his background's in entertainment. But they did put one person on the leadership team with a, with a long card history. And, and David told me that it's, it's a good dynamic. It's a good yin and yang because the, the, you know, all the others have these ideas that sometimes are more difficult to implement mm -hmm. because of all the, and, and David knows how all the, you know, how everything's made, how everything's, you know. Uh, how uh, the sauce is created. How the sauce is created. <laughs> he knows. So he can, he can bring everybody down to earth a little bit, but they're pushing. They're all pushing. I mean, all these new folks are coming in and they're pushing for all these real kind of extravagant new ideas about where trading cards can go in the future. Well, it's outside fresh perspective thinking that, you know, hasn't been there. So out of the Avengers mm -hmm. that have assembled, was there anyone, particularly in that group outside of maybe David that you've already mentioned, that the background was a little it was an interesting play for you for fanatics to acquire. Well, I mean, so first of all, the CEO, Mike Mahan, he was, now he was hired, I think about a year, a little less than a year ago. Last, last summer they hired him, but his, I mean, he was the CEO of Dick Clark entertainment, Dick Clark entertainment previously for the, you know, he, that's what he did previously. They run like the golden globe awards. They were a lot of these big award shows, mm -hmm. big television events, some of the highest rated events of the year, like, and he's the CEO. And so, you know, he's clearly bringing a content event. How do we make this into a spectacle? That's the yes. lens that he's coming at it through, right? The new CMO who they just hired, Ken Turner, they just announced his hiring during the conference. So, you know, brand new, fresh breaking news this week. Uh, he's the, he was the CMO of Red Bull. 
Um, so, you know, he led marketing for Red Bull, which is... That makes me so excited. Yes, because what, what a cool brand, right? Red Bull's always been out of the box. Yeah. So I'm thinking of marketing. And like, and you talk about something like Red Bull gives you wings. Like, it's things like that that just absolutely turn, you know, a marketing of a brand on its head. And that was the one that I was like, that intrigues me yeah. the most. They brought in They brought in people specifically for athlete relations. Getting athletes involved is a huge part of of their plan going forward so they've got like athlete relations you know people that are there just doing that they even brought in one of the former directors of of fraud and counterfeiting from the fbi Ooh. to be their standards and practices leader i met him he's tw i think he said wow. he's 23 years at the fbi overseeing the biggest fraud and counterfeit cases in the collectibles industry over the last 23 years at the FBI and he's now full time with Fanatics Collectibles. And what he's going <laughs> to That's crazy. What he's going to do is he's going to ensure accountability. So for example, he's like, you know, he's like there's all these questions that people have about like, you know, is it possible that the big hits are getting are going to certain breakers? Right. It will not be possible under his watch. It will wow. not be possible under his watch. Well, that that, you know, well that doesn't serve a lot of people content that they can then push but you know it it definitely helps for the accountability factor yes. of it which i think is extreme that's a very interesting play there too i yeah. mean so really they did basically put together the avengers in every area like in every area they've really put together a, a a group of talented people now again that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to assemble properly and and you know be successful that doesn't necessarily mean that but i think it gives them the best possible chance of doing mm -hmm. it. And it's it, it's also just impressive seeing the investment they're putting in to hiring this leadership because they are not going cheap. I mean, you know, they're, I, I don't know, you know, obviously the salaries all these folks are making and the incentive packages and all that stuff. But I mean, they're clearly shelling out cash and hiring for a lot of positions that in the past probably never would have been considered. Like a trading card company bringing in you know, a former leader at the FBI just to ensure, you know, standards and practices are followed internally and no funny business happens with the production or distribution of the cards. Like, I don't think that's a hire that trading card companies in the past would have invested in. But Fanatics is investing so heavily, they're willing to make that type of, of investment. Yeah, especially if you need a 10X, you need standards yeah. and practices to get you there. So, you know, speaking of uh, Mike and, you know, him coming from Dick Clark Productions and it being a spectacle, mm -hmm. this Tops conference was a spectacle. It was a spectacle. How was the event? They did a really nice job with it. So, uh, and, you know, I had not been to the previous Tops conferences because I had always heard that it wasn't that great. I always, so I've, I've been to the Industry Summit a number of times, which is kind of the Panini's counterpart, sort of. Um, that happens in the fall, but I've, I've, I haven't gone to the tops one because people never seem that excited or hyped up about it. Well, I think this year they did a really nice job with it. They invested more in it and made it a bigger and better event from what I understand than previous years. And I'm sure part of that was Fanatics influence and wanting to build on this thing and make it better and better. It was in downtown Phoenix. It was at the baseball stadium. So uh, Chase Field in downtown Phoenix where the Diamondbacks play. They rented out the baseball stadium. The whole thing all of it was at the baseball stadium. So all of the speaker sessions and all that kind of stuff. You were um, on the field. Uh, not on, we were, they were, they, the way they set it up was you sat in the stands. The speakers were actually standing on top of the dugout. Oh, wow. Um, which was kind of okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So you would sit in the normal stands and then the speakers would be on the dugout and they had the presentations on the big jumbotron mm -hmm. in the stadium. <laughs> it was a cool environment and it was, you know, well done. Um, you know, they had good entertaining stuff taking place in the evenings. Like they took everybody to Top Golf. Uh, one night. How, and, how did you do? I, I actually didn't golf at all. I talked to so many people. <laughs> like it, it, it was great networking. Mm -hmm. Great networking. Like if, and I, I'd say to anybody out there, if you're trying to do anything business wise in the sports card hobby, anything entrepreneurial, right? Like if you're trying to become a breaker, become a card shop owner, or do build your own app, or create, you know, create your own supply that you're going to sell to the market, whatever it is, you've got to go to these industry conferences. And the three that you really need to hit are: you need to hit the Tops Conference, uh, which is every February. You need to hit Mint Collective, which is coming up at the end of March, mm -hmm. and then you need to hit the Industry Summit, which is in the fall, typically I think October. 
Uh, those are really the three because those are your opportunities to network with other industry leaders. And there was just a lot of networking at this, like a bunch of card shop owners, a bunch of breakers, a bunch of leaders of the various companies in the industry, a lot of, just a lot of networking opportunity. And that's, that's, that can be very, very valuable. Yeah. Anytime you get a network, obviously at these types of events, it is like you said, very valuable. It's a lot of relationship building. It's a lot of, you know, trying to move yourself forward, move your company forward, whatever you're representing forward. Now, speaking of forward, there was a lot of news that came out of this conference. Yeah, there, was. there was a lot of, a lot of you know, fun, interesting plays on, on news, on, on things that they're deciding to do. But there's also controversial ones. Do you want to talk about those? Yeah, I mean, so Fanatics has said they're going to innovate, right? And and this conference made it clear that they are pushing hard in that direction. So the announcements that probably got the most attention were around product innovation and 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 specifically new cards they're introducing or that kind of thing I, there were some things they were doing that i thought were really cool some some people thought were cheesy i thought it was cool like for example uh big league baseball which is a set that is more oriented at kids and it's a set that historically has never done well right well it's coming back out again and they completely revamped it this year it's coming out here in about a month and this year among other things it's going to have cards in there that will have big name baseball players follow you on Instagram if you pull the card. They literally have a Mike Trout, a Ronald Acuna Jr., 13 other MLB players. You pull the card and they're going to follow you on Instagram. Oh, man. That's, that's fun, right? That's I a mean, fun play. That's yeah. a fun thing. And I know some people think that that's cheesy or whatever, but like that's the type of innovative like kind of product design. And, and they'll try these different things and then they'll get things that people just really latch onto. They're doing one thing that I think they're really going to do a great job of. They want to eliminate redemptions. And they said that several times in the conference. They're like, one of our primary goals is to reduce redemptions as much as possible and eventually eliminate them altogether. Mm -hmm. And one way they're doing this is you're going to see a lot more game used memorabilia. So for example, they said when the new MLB rookies mm -hmm. this season, uh, when they get their first hit, They've, they've, they've got it arranged where they're going to take the base that they reach. So like if a, if a first at bat for a big rookie, he hits a single, goes to first base, they're going to take first base and they're going to take first base and they're going to cut it up and they're going to, and you're going to have a, you know, 50 trading cards mm -hmm. and it will be a commemorative moment of this player's first hit. And there's part of the base that he reached, right? First pitch out for first strikeout for a pitcher, they're going to take the mounds. They want to then bring this to the other sports. You know, first basket for one of the hot basketball rookies, they're going to take the net. You know, in football, first touchdown pass for a rookie quarterback, they're going to take the pylon or they're going to take the ball. And they're going to cut these things up and they're going to put them into trading cards. And by doing that, it takes the pressure off of needing as many autograph cards. They're basically kind of changing what people are going to chase, right? right. And they're going to do it. I think in a very smart way that actually like that's like that's a cool thing like people I think people are really going to get behind that like the you know the concept of I've this card's got the net from the very first shot that LeBron James ever made I mean imagine that right back in 2003 if they had this going on or 86 with Jordan well actually Jordan was before 86 you just I think of 86 because that was his Fleer rookie year but what was he 84, I think? Mm -hmm. uh, so 84, he hits a shot and the the first net from the first game. I mean, that card would be massively important today. Oh, for and sure. And so that's what they're going to start doing going forward. That reminds me a lot of like, you know, the, the plays that we make to get tickets. You know, when you're talking about getting a ticket from the first game yeah. that the rookie played, you know, yeah. those types of things, those collectibles that have matched that type of first time, first moment uh instances i mean darren Ravel is a huge advocate of you know these yeah. ticket plays and that's almost in the same vein of taking this idea of capturing a ticket from an event that you know the first home run mike trout ever had this was the ticket for that you know that baseball game but now you may get a maybe a piece of the bat or something uh, along those lines that can construe to having that uh, idealized moment within the card. I think that's an absolute smart play. I, I think so as well. And then what they're going to do, and this is how you 10X the market. Mm -hmm. Then what they're going to do is they're going to have a very coordinated effort with the athletes to promote the cards. So 
when you know the baseball player's card comes out that contains pieces of the ball from the first home run he ever hit, mm -hmm. you're then going to see the athlete tweeting and posting to Instagram about the fact that that product with that card just it's came available. out. You're yeah. going to see them ripping the product open on their Instagram and trying to find their own card. They're going to build hype and buzz. And their goal is to have every single release be a big deal and for there to be known chase cards in every release and for there to be a very integrated activation plan where this thing's being marketed this thing the you know this thing's being activated across social you've got athletes you've got influencers that are involved in the hype around every single product the athlete like the athlete things are really big deal to them and that's mm -hmm. something that i've been saying for a long time like one of the biggest missed opportunities historically in the sports card market is getting the athletes themselves better integrated with cards like why haven't you seen more big name athletes doing box breaks tweeting about their own cards posting to inst going live on instagram and ripping packs how about doing it in the dugout of a game you know yeah. like why can't we get like more of that type of integration it's not something that has historically happened it is absolutely going to happen going forward fanatics is laser focused on getting the athletes involved and then creating a lot of media and publicity around the athletes involvement i think it's very smart i think that is how you can begin to take the average everyday sports fan who doesn't collect cards and get them interested into cards if they're seeing you know if your golden state warriors fan is seeing steph curry you know rip a couple of packs right before or after the game and you know he's live on instagram he's talking about his own like oh, i'm trying to find i'm you know trying to find the the, the big hit card that's mm -hmm. you know the piece of the jersey uh you know that i wore in the nba finals last year he's talking about that's how like the the just the average sports fan sees that and they're like oh that's pretty cool i i want that too like mm -hmm. it it's almost it's almost taking it more in the lines of like kind of memorabilia moments all that kind of stuff it, it, almost beyond cards and I think that this, that's they're trying to make cards an experience that goes beyond cards and brings the average fan in who just thinks it's cool. That's again what goes back to the first uh, episode we ever did about experience. Yeah. And how do you create that moment for the consumer where they feel that tangible need to purchase or buy or rip or participate in something that's going on? So I think it ties into that whole idea of like building that experience. And I think Fanatics is doing an absolutely incredible job at least leading into this so outside of you know them doing you know cleaning up on product definitely focusing on product you know tying in the athletes again which is a completely smart 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 play was there anything like controversial that came out Out outside of maybe you know redemptions i know has always been sort of an, an issue and they're looks like they're trying to clean that up but they're trying to clean up redemptions else? i mean they said all the right things they said customer service is a big priority as well for them mm -hmm. and the the card manufacturers historically have been known for just being bad at customer service i mean you know you get redemption cards they don't go redeem forever or you get it you open up a box it's missing a card you're supposed to get an auto you didn't get an auto or whatever the issue is you yep. You email, you call, you don't get any reply. It's a black hole. You're just out of luck, right? They're really trying to clean that up. And they're saying right now already, they've got like tops customer service has become much more responsive. So uh, hopefully, you know, so they're saying all the right things. In terms of, you know, controversy, I don't think any, I don't think any big controversy came out of the event. I mean, there were a few things they announced that I don't know resonated super well with people. Like they, they said, for example, they were going to do these, frozen fractures. Yeah, can we talk about that? I was actually hoping you would. I what? Can cuz yeah. I think the general collective is like, um, what? I, so, <laughs> the frozen so, you know, here's the deal, right? They are trying to figure out how do we create, you know, more and more excitement of cards that people want to chase, big hits and breaks without you know, how do we expand the, you know, the product line to meet what hopefully will be increasing customer demand, but still keep things like exclusive and, and you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So if you only have one one of one, if you only have one super fractor in a baseball set, then everyone, of course, is chasing that. But like once it's once it's pulled, it's pulled. Um, and, it, you know, your odds of pulling it are pretty impossible. So they're thinking about like, how do we make some other really big 
hit cards that people are interested in that aren't necessarily going to compromise the one of one, but are still going to be like really kind of special cards that resonate on the market. So they came up with the idea of the frozen fractor. The frozen fractor is a zero of zero. So How it's, but so then you're holding air? Like I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, it's 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 just gonna, it's going to be numbered zero of zero, right? And then they also, and this is maybe where I don't know. People thought this maybe went a little too far. They're also going to get into negative numbering. So they're going to do negative one out of zero, negative two out of zero, down to negative five out of zero. These will be frozen fractors. So you could pull like a negative three out of zero. I don't like, I don't know. I, I appreciate the creativity of the idea. I actually kind of like the frozen theme to the card. Like yeah. I think they showed like a mock-up picture of it and it was, you know, it looked like a, a card with like, you know, a cool kind of ice theme overlaid over top of the card. So a little bit like a, you know, the frozen ice, the cracked ice theme, um, but it, it, they looked cool. So, I mean, I can get behind a zero out of zero. I don't know about a negative three out of zero. I don't know if I, I need that in my life, but a zero <laughs> out of zero, I could get behind a zero out of zero. So that's cool. Yeah. I was going to ask if they had shown a mock-up because when you're talking about something like a frozen refractor, like a negative, you know, I, I would have thought like a printing plate. Some uh, Somehow you make a printing plate, mm -hmm. which is technically a zero. Yeah. If you think about it, take yeah. a printing plate and then, you know, do some sort of ice design off of that or make it like this metal, harsh, cold element in yeah. your hand. Like that's what I thought it probably would have been. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I guess I, I was generally just wondering what the, mo the f a negative numbering seems to be counterintuitive because it's still positive numbering because there is you know three of those but it's not like there's negative three from the count so just it just leads leads the consumer to be a little confused it, it, yeah, that one might be a little odd i agree but look they're really trying to push the envelope when it comes to product innovation mm -hmm. and they're trying to create more hit cards more interest there's uh like you know they're doing these like hidden gems right now in their baseball products which are almost impossible to find and, and even the golden mirror cards that like people have been chasing top series one like they're doing a lot of unique things and and it's just the tip of the iceberg you're mm -hmm. going to see a lot of that so you're going to see excitement around these really rare opportunities to pull something incredibly special and i think they're going to do a really good job which has not been the case in the past with tops or panini or upper deck but i think they're going to do a really good job going forward of bringing a lot of attention to the hit cards get everyone in on the chase. Everyone's excited about it. Much like we had that moment in time when, you know, Drake was opening the flawless uh, boxes yes. and everybody was searching for the triple logo, man. Like yep. that was a very, very captivating moment mm -hmm. for the sports card hobby where everybody was focused on who's going to pull the triple logo, man, who's going to pull the triple logo, man. And this turned into a giant spectacle on social and everything like that for weeks. This went on for weeks, right? Yep. That's what they want to recreate. And they want to recreate that on an ongoing, constant basis with every major release. All right. That's their goal. I can dig it. I, can I, I think I, a lot of people can dig yeah. it. Yeah. And especially if you get the athletes and the celebrities into it, just like we had Drake, you know, chasing the triple logo, man, it could really be a thing. And that is the challenge. That's what they want to do. That is how they think they are going to 10x the number of collectors in the trading card market by creating buzz and publicity like that. And if they can, I believe they will. All right. Well, was that your biggest overall takeaway from the event? I mean, like, is that generally how you just see like all of the news coming out of the event, you know, the people that you talk to, the general feel that you have coming off of the tops conference? I'm very optimistic, right? I've always been optimistic, yes, you're right? Very, I'm, you're I'm, very I'm, positive. I'm, <laughs> I've been optimistic about this hobby from the beginning. I'm optimistic about, what they're doing. I really am. Uh, I don't think all of it's going to work, right? Some of it's going to, some of it's not going to work. Some of it will fail. Some of it, the card collecting Failure community. is tuition. And that's the thing. Failure is tuition, Kelly, right? So they're going to learn from their mistakes. That's the important thing, right? But they're going to try a lot of mm -hmm. stuff. And some of it, I think, is going to work unbelievably well. Other things won't work. The card community will tell them if things aren't working and they'll they'll back off the idea and do something different. And, and that's how they learn, right? So there will be failure, mm -hmm. but I think there's going to be a lot of success. 
Okay. Well, th- they also hinted at something during. The- yeah, they did. They made it. They made a teasing. So I think I have a theory for what it <laughs> Please, is now. Let, let's black helicopters are above circling. What is the theory here? Right. So the first day of the conference in his opening speech, Mike Mahan, the CEO of Fanatics said that the biggest product announcements in sports card in a generation, in a, gener- in a generation, generation. Yeah. basically history of sports cards, right? right? A generation will be coming next month. Now, he didn't tell us what it was. It was like this giant tease for the audience. Like, wait a minute. You just said what, sir? <laughs> like, you just said the biggest announcement up, in a generation is happening next month? Right. And then you're not going to tell us anything about it? But it's the tease. they hinted. there was there, if, you, if you listen to all the sessions and you listen intently as I did, I think there were some hints. And so I have a theory. Okay. I have a Give theory as to theory. what it is. Give us a theory. I think they are about to acquire or obtain or some, I don't know if it's a company or a collection, but some unbelievable number and quality of things mm-hmm. that they're then going to put into cards that are going to become a really big chase. Like I think what they're going to do is I think next month they're going to announce, look at what we have. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like, you know, crazy jerseys and bats or i don't know what it is but or maybe some ridiculous experiences i'm not right. sure but they're gonna they're gonna have acquired something and they're gonna say we're gonna put these into cards and mm. these cards are going to become the biggest chase cards in the history of collecting yeah that's what I think is coming. And I think next month they're going to announce something huge. So this makes me interested and like excited to to ask you this question because I'm also starting to think about if you if there was a say experience, it does come with an experience. So if you're chasing a card and you pull a card and it comes with an experience with the card, what would be the experience you would want to pull from that card? Wow, that's a great question. What would be the experience I'd want to pull from a card? Um, For me, it would be like if I'm opening a a box of soccer, like World Cup soccer, and I pull a card that gets me two tickets to the next mm -hmm. World Cup, that would be a huge chase card for me because that's like a bucket list item going to the World Cup. Yeah, but it's got to be be something more than that because you can buy tickets to the World Cup. Yeah, they're expensive, but maybe like the final, like two tickets to the final of the World Cup and a box suite and you get a meet like Leo Messi. Okay, see, now we're getting somewhere, yeah. right? You get to meet Leo Messi because that's not an experience that you can pay for. Right. That's an experience that like Well, it'd be Kylian truly... Mbappe now because I don't know if Leo's coming back, but yeah. Fair. But yeah, how about like, how about getting to run out of the tunnel with the team? Ooh, like the gator? You get to run out of the tunnel yes. with the gators? Yes, how about that? How about you, you get to run with, out with of the arms? tunnel of, you know, put that in <laughs> Bowman U, make that chase cards. <laughs> In Bowman U, maybe they have that for every NCAA team that there's one chase card. It's a redemption card in Bowman U. If you pull the one of one redemption card, you get to run out of the tunnel with that college football team. Oh, that would be exciting. Uh, Yeah. I mean, that's the type of thing I think we will see from Fanatics, right? I think those types of experiences, throwing out the first pitch at a baseball game. Ooh, yes. Like that kind of stuff, I've right? always wanted to do that too, but I always figured you have to be like kind of famous to taking, do that. Taking, getting to take batting practice at the home run derby. Like, Whoa. you know, or that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Or maybe you are maybe you get, a, you know, catch balls in the outfield during the home run derby. Or like those are the types of things that I think Fanatics has access to because of their relationship with the leagues mm-hmm. that you never saw, that we didn't, it wasn't possible before. Right. But I think you're going to see moments like that be integrated where you can literally pull that experience out of a box of cards. Oh yeah. I really feel like anytime there's any experience related to the Gators, you would be the oh, first I'm person there. in line. I mean, if they to start buy putting those boxes, if they start putting <laughs> Gator experiences in Bowman U Chrome, you know, ooh, I'd be buying a lot of that product. Listen up, fanatics. I'd be fanatics. buying a lot of that product. <laughs> Gator experiences, you've automatically got a buyer here. I mean, I mean. Send me, just <laughs> ship some cases over here. Send them this way right now. All right, let's 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 go into our, I mean, we've had fun just now, but let's go into our fun segment, which is um, we're going to shake it up this week. It's going to be underrated or overrated. And I want, I want your opinion on what I'm about to give you, if it's underrated yeah. or overrated, industry conferences, because we just talked about one. Yeah, definitely underrated. I mean, it, the experience of coming back from that, it's so great mm-hmm. to connect with all of the people in the hobby. There's so many, you know what, there's so much positivity among 
most of the card shop owner, not all, not all, most of the card shop owners, there's so much positivity and like the breakers and you know, the, the, uh, the, the industry, like everyone, there's this, there's this feeling right now that like, we're kind of going, we're going a little bit into this unknown territory, mm -hmm. but we're on a journey together and everybody believes, most people believe <laughs> <laughs> that the years ahead are going to be special and memorable. This hobby is going to grow. I feel like when I go to one of these industry conferences, mm -hmm. I still feel like we're kind of on the ground floor of something that's going to grow and become really, really big. And like even like the other content creators who I talk to, right? And and some of them were at the conference. We get to hang out and and you know, good great friends with with a lot of the folks there. And I I look at them and I'm like. What happens to us if this does 10x? Fanatics is trying to 10x this thing. I believe that they can 10x this thing. What happens to us? It, it will be crazy, right? <laughs> it will be crazy. And, and not just for us, but it will be crazy for the card shop owners and for the breakers, right. for everybody in the business, people who are creating supplies, people, whatever you're doing related to sports cards. If Fanatics is even halfway successful at 10xing this thing, it's going to blow everybody up. And when you go to one of these industry conferences, here's what I think. When you go to one of these industry conferences five years from now, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be way bigger than it is oh, today. for sure. And I think the people that went this year are going to be kind of looking at each other five years from now going, wow. Look a lot's at this. changed. I remember five years ago yeah. when it was just us. Yeah. And now look at this. I think yes. that's what's going to happen, right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, well, so I the thing that captures me when you come back from these, because I've gone to, I've gone with you to a couple of industry conferences, but having you come back from this type of a conference, um, especially with the direction of where we're going with fanatics, make it, it, you feel refreshed because it reminds you that like all of the work that we're doing, all of the work that we put in, you know, where we're, where we're trying to push content that we currently have right now going forward, it just sort of re-solidifies all of the hard work we have been doing. And there's a re there's this feeling of being refreshed to know that Fanatics has our back because you know a lot of people, whether you support or whether you're optimistic or maybe not so optimistic, you're still putting your heart and soul into this hobby. And it's nice to know that there is a company that is now starting to really change the pathway of the hobby, but they're saying they're going to do it in a way that will benefit everybody because they're making it larger. So I think that's, it's very refreshing to hear. It, it. is. It's exciting to go to these things. And that's why industry conferences are underrated. Underrated. So if, if, underrated. Underrated. All right. Baseball cards then. Uh, because I'm you just also came off of a top. I'm definitely going underrated on baseball cards because with all this product innovation coming down the line, mm -hmm. it's all starting with baseball because Fanatics does not have football or basketball yet. So it's all starting with baseball and it'll, it will get to those other sports eventually, Hope, hopefully sooner rather than later. But, right. but it's baseball now. So all the product innovation that they're going to really push this year is going to be in baseball. And I think you're going to see a lot more product innovation in the baseball category uh, than you will in football or basketball because, because Fanatics and Tops are the ones that are driving, you know, driving the innovation right now. Right. They have the full control over that at this moment. They so do. It's, it's wanting to change that drastically. So I think that the baseball card market in particular – is going to rise this year. I think more and more people will start paying attention to it, collecting. I think there will be more excitement around baseball cards this year than pro probably ever before. Uh, so I'd say baseball cards right now as a whole, underrated. underrated. Yep. Now, there was other products that yep. Tops mentioned while you were there. One of the products in which I am a big fan yep. of because I am a fan of the series, Star Wars. Star Wars cards are also underrated. They, Let's go. Tops is that that was so it was like baseball one, and then like Star Wars was up there as the number two. They also spent you know they also spent a lot of time on soccer. They spent some time on like the college products and overtime and everything like that. But but Star Wars was definitely a focus as well, and they are really trying to push the Star Wars product line. So they're going to have more than 10 Star Wars releases this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're going to have um, 
the whole range from from the first Star Wars paper card product, so kind of the Topps flagship Star Wars, right? Um, you know, plus a Topps Chrome and a Topps Sapphire, all the way on up to they're going to do a really high end product. I forget what it's called, but at the end of the year, it's kind of like the you know transcendent or diamond icons equivalent for Star Wars, where Ooh. it's going to be like a really high end memorabilia nice. autographs, the whole thing. Um, so there's a lot of investment being put into Star Wars cards. Uh, it's going to be fun to see that play out. Ooh, okay. All right. Well, then last one, because this sort of plays into Star Wars entertainment cards. So outside of Star Wars, I'm actually going to say the other entertainment cards, I'm going to say are overrated. Really? Yeah. So, you know, there was, yeah. I mean, they talked about, uh, they're coming out with cards for the Dune movie. Uh, at the end of this year, I think in mm -hmm. December, Dune 2 is coming out. They're coming out with, or there's some some Dune movie, and they're coming out with cards for the Dune movie. <laughs> some um, Dune movie, and, a movie about Dune. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Stranger Things is going to have cards. But you know what? Those things, those things were announced like I think early last year. Like those things, they were talking about those things at the National, yep. well before the National last year. Yep. They I think they announced those things maybe at Mint Collective last year. It's been a year. And those cards are still forthcoming sometime later this year. And they didn't announce anything. I don't think they announced anything real new. Oh, they did announce there was going to be cards around a Japanese anime series. Some people were excited about that. But there were there were relatively little announcements mm -hmm. in product innovation for entertainment cards outside of those couple of things that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. It really seems to me like... It's Star Wars number one by far right. in the entertainment card category at tops. Um, and then kind of beyond that, you know, these other, I, I don't know what the future of like the movie cards are. And I, I just, I, I'm not sure about it. I, they might not have like done, a, you know, coming into this hobby, the, the, the first things that I think, especially with this sort of Avenger team, you would want to take a look at is the sports. You're wanting to focus on these products that will help shape um, and tie into what Fanatics wants to do with 10xing. I think entertainment cards are probably taking a backseat, but I I don't think that you know there's not going to be innovation there. I think it. I think the play would be maybe looking at things in the future like Avatar, like I you know playing into an Avatar card or anything that they can work out. But also, you know, entertainment studios are really hard when it comes to like. Uh, agree, agreeing on using character names and things like that. So there is a whole another step yeah. of legality with that type of thing. And, and that's the thing. Fanatics has all the relationships with the sports Sports, leagues. yep. They don't have relationships with like the movie production studio that's yep. creating the new Avatar movie necessarily, right? They've got the sports relationship. So I think I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be sports first and foremost. It seems like they're all in on Star Wars as well. But I think I think that's sports first and foremost and a lot of attention to Star Wars. I think that's what you're mainly going to see out of Tops and Fanatics over the next couple of years. I still, it's still a good pathway. I mean, in general, those are very well-liked, you know, uh, sports, Star Wars. You know, I know Marvel will eventually, you know, do the same. But I, those are all very well-liked avenues. So I think that's interesting and, and exciting. But let's... Let's go to the end of our uh, segment with what we do every week with what's a win and what's a loss. So let's start with uh, what was a win this week, Jeff? Just, you know, seeing all the friends, seeing the optimism at, at this summit. Mm -hmm. It's when you go to something like that and you've been to a number of them now, like you get to know the other people in the industry. You get to know the card shop owners. You get to know the breakers and the other content creators and and you you form friendships with these people and it's just it's great to see them and it's great to see everybody for the most part everybody doing well and sharing an excitement about the future so that was definitely my win for the week just connecting so with everybody so who all did you see while you were there uh so i mean i hung out a lot with stephanie from mama breaks mm -hmm. with uh jess from bleaker was there uh there i love what they're both doing they're like trailblazing women and yeah. you know in, the, in, a, in what has ladies. been a male dominated field and you know they're they're trailblazing women and and doing a lot of really good things there so 
it was really cool to see them. Um, he, you know, other card shop owners here. We had three card shop owners from Atlanta here, which is pretty hey. cool. Joe Davis, uh, you know, got baseball cards. Went right. Dave from Dave Sports Cards. Steve, who's got a shop down in Peachtree City. I've not actually been to his oh. shop before, but he's got one down in Peachtree City that's oh, doing nice. really well. We should go. Yeah, he worked. He used to work at Got Baseball Cards and for for a long time, and then he opened up his own shop down there in Peachtree City. They do trade nights and everything as well. Oh, cool. So we got a good representation from Atlanta, which was pretty cool. And then from everywhere, like I met a couple of guys from uh, Korea. Oh, wow. Yeah. In fact, I'll, That's have, to, a long I'll have to talk to you about that because there's business opportunity in Korea regarding cards. So oh, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll take that one off air. Okay. Uh, but that's, that's exciting. Right. Um, and so, you know, there were, there were folks there from Germany. Uh, there was a lot of representation, you know, mm -hmm. from everywhere. Right. And so it, it, so many people, so many oh, people. Oh, that's good. All right. Well then what would have been the loss? Cause it sounds like it was a great week. Phoenix was freezing cold. It was cold. <laughs> That was the one that the I was Florida, not prepared. The Florida guy does not it's, like the cold. <laughs> why is it cold? I mean, I like I associated Phoenix with desert and with sunshine. The desert is and cold with in the hot winter. weather. Oh my lord! It was freezing did you, what, cold. Did you bring shorts or something? Did no, you, were you I, not I was prepared? Not, I was not ill prepared for this thing. I was. Did you bring a jacket at least? I had it. I had like a yeah. I had a jacket. It still wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was freezing. And then inside the stadium, the stadium was covered. You know, it's an indoor stadium. And um, it was like an ice box. It was cold. It was cold. So That was the loss. So the loss was I was the cold. The loss was a man raised in Florida who likes Florida weather, lives in Atlanta, which is also semi-Florida weather, was mad that it was cold in February. I thought Phoenix was going to be like the Bahamas. <laughs> no. I'm like, you know, I just, I was like, oh, it's going to be great. I'm going to have like a tiki drink by the pool here oh in Phoenix. Oh my gosh. Did you actually end up having, because we know you like your tiki drinks. I did not have a tiki drink. It was not, <laughs> you can't have tiki drinks. It was 30, like the weather, it was literally in the 30s while we were there. Like what the heck, Phoenix? It's, well, the in desert the is 30s? cold. In the 30s? Why are we in the 30s? Have you have you not been to the desert? Often? I associated it with like Southern California, where it's always lovely. No. It's not far from San Diego. Oh it's like gosh. down in that general area no. of the country. Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? No. I mean, okay. I've seen it out of my airplane window. Oh. <laughs> it looks nice. Beautiful. No, you have to actually go to the Grand Canyon. But the Grand Canyon is cold. Like it, like during the day, it is warm. But the minute that that sun goes down, it gets chilly. Hmm. Welcome to it's the nice, desert. It's nice looking at it from outside the airplane window. <laughs> Appreciate it that way. All right. Well, there you go. That's our show. We learned lots of things, including that Jeff does not think Arizona is cold. Shouldn't be cold. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kelly, for of another course. great episode. And thank you, everybody out there. And of course, uh, subscribe to us. This is on all the major po podcast platforms, plus YouTube. You can watch the video version of this on YouTube. And then if you follow It's Jeff Wilson on Instagram or on TikTok, you get highlights from the show as well. Yep. Awesome. Thank you all. See you in the next episode. I'm feeling good. Get better.